Now a Levite woman gave birth to a son. She hid him for three months. Biblical literacy is a fragile thing. We're only one generation from kids not knowing God's Word. Gail Pollitz, an editor for the Story Bible from Concordia Publishing House, is also a former teacher and she's seen the sickening trend firsthand in her own classes throughout the years. If I don't tell it to my children, it's lost for that generation. Of course, we know the Holy Spirit works through the Word, but they need to hear the Word, they need to have the Word, and so it's very important. And sometimes we lose something without even knowing it. Shall I call a Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you? Christine Lewis teaches children at a Lutheran daycare and relates. Train up your child. And uh, what better way than, you know, to read them the Bible stories every day. But with so many competing voices and distractions in today's society, sometimes it's tough to get young children to even sit down long enough just to read them a story, even if it is the most important story ever told. So creating a Bible to engage young readers became CPH's challenge. Then he became her son, and she named him Moses. And never before in 150 years of publishing has CPH produced a Bible for children as rich and feature-filled as the Story Bible. Paulitz considers it one of her biggest privileges. It's something that you think, thank you God, that I could be a part of this. I'll say that uh, for years as a father I read Bible stories with children out of a variety of resources and I was never quite happy with them. Ed Engelbrecht, managing editor for the Story Bible here at CPH, took it on as an opportunity and a challenge to correct the many flaws he'd seen in so many other children's Bibles. We saw that there were large gaps often in the telling of the story from the Old Testament and how often there were prophecies about Christ and his work that just were left out. I have reviewed at least 15 to 20 other Bibles. Yes, they have Bible stories. But none of the Bibles had arrows that kept pointing to Jesus Christ throughout. It took hundreds of hours of research and four years to even collect the rich artwork which enhances the pages of the story Bible. The first thing I noticed was, I mean, the vivid pictures. They, they just kind of stood out. The Bible is a story of two things, God's love for you and how Jesus came to be your Savior. Even Old Testament stories like Abraham and Isaac, the Exodus Passover, and the bronze serpent point forward to the coming of Jesus Christ. The story behind the story Bible, that's the one, that's the story, that it's about Jesus Christ. In other Bible story collections, the Old Testament is just absolutely void of that message. The Bible brings to the forefront messianic prophecies to tell the fullest account of Christ, all without losing the action, the fun, and the intrigue of so many other popular children's Bible stories. Look, the rainbow. Like Noah and the Ark, David and Goliath, Moses in the bulrushes, Daniel in the lion's den, Jonah, and so many other basic Bible stories that kids know and love. The birth of Jesus is a happy story. But in contrast, the Story Bible does not overlook Old Testament characters like Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Jeremiah, whose prophecies about Christ are crucial for a full understanding of the New Testament gospel message. Very rarely do you see these characters even introduced. Um, they, they, they go for the, the easy to tell stories. And um, uh, what we sought to do was uh, get the right stories CPH's challenge was also to tell a full account of Christ while also adapting it for children. One of the big problems, I think, in children's Bible story collections is they usually paraphrase the Bible stories. They take the Bible story, put it in their own words, and often they end up wandering from what the Bible really says. 
So instead of paraphrasing, as is the case in so many other children's Bibles, the Story Bible's English Standard Version text was put through readability screenings and carefully adjusted to fit the age range for the Story Bible. Then the Old Testament. And the result is this, a well-received, stunning treasury of 130 stories leading children to faith in their Savior Jesus. We had uh, a Bible here and it was a children's Bible, but it was all cartoons. And he said, well, this doesn't look like Jesus. And I said, well, this over here does. CPH sold out of its first print run in only a few months. It's so exciting to know that it's in the hands of ch parents and children and teachers and pastors and even other bookstores <laughs> going who knows where around the world. You know, when the hands go up, it's like, wow, they are listening to you. Well, how did he get out of the pit? You know, well, was God there when he got him out? And I mean, it just gets even the littlest ones to think. The Story Bible's great attention to detail makes it easy to use for both parents and teachers. You can hold it open and lay it flat in your lap. And because it's substantial, that's really helpful. The Bible's hard cover and page quality is also meant to handle inexperienced page turns of young readers. The Bible also incorporates engaging sidebar features called Ask, Do, and Pray, which help parents better explain the story. The family can talk about them. There's even vocabulary words and a glossary in the back. Now these are the words I want you to listen for, and if you hear them, I want you to raise your hand, okay? Combined, you won't find these features in any other Bible for young people. Who is this person hiding? Even the hidden graphical elements of the Story Bible engage children, as Paulitz demonstrates. Do you see, Paula, what's hidden on this page? It's actually a honey, some honeycomb here. There's something to look for when you're not a reader. The sentence structure, the breaks in paragraph, the text, and the size were all adjusted to make this Bible most readable for young children. It's just Im uh, important to have that uh, background in the Bible to get kids learning it from an early age. Our generation might think, hey, you know, I went to Sunday school, I got that. It's probably still going on today. But if we don't pay attention to what's going on, we might be surprised that there are a lot of children that aren't in Sunday school. There are a lot of children that aren't hearing God's Word, and we want that best gift for them. It's uh, important for history. It's important for shaping their values. But it's most important for shaping their faith. So they learn what it is to be God's people, to struggle to do what's right, and how God loves for them, cares for them, and forgives them when they fail and fall. For more information on the Story Bible, visit cph.org slash storybible.